So let's say you have a protein and that protein has a specific amino acid sequence. Now suppose you want to take your protein and modify that protein in a very slight way. So all we want to do with our protein is change one amino acid in that protein to a different amino acid. How exactly can we carry out this process? Well, we can use a process in recombinant DNA technology known as side-directed mutagenesis, also known as oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis. So proteins can be modified at a single amino acid by using this process we call side-directed mutagenesis. Now, to demonstrate how this process works, let's suppose we have a protein and we want to change an amino acid glutamate to the amino acid aspartate in that protein. How exactly can we do this? Well, we need two things. Number one, we need that double-stranded DNA molecule that contains the gene that encodes for that protein in the first place, the correct sequence of nucleotides. And we also actually need to know the sequence of nucleotides around that area that we want to modify. So in that area where we want to change that codon sequence that codes for glutamate to the codon sequence that codes for aspartate. So we need two things. Number one, a DNA molecule that contains the gene that encodes for that protein. And number two, to know the nucleotide sequence on that gene around the side that is actually to be altered. <clears throat> now, the important step in this procedure is to basically create a special DNA primer that is complementary to the nucleotide sequence along that gene where we want to make that alteration. And the way that we want to build the DNA primer is we want to change the sequence in that DNA primer so that we change the codon that codes from glutamate to the codon that codes for aspartate. And to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose that the DNA molecule that contains the gene that encodes for the protein is this DNA molecule here. So we have a circular single strand of DNA that came from some type of plasmid, for example. Now, this is our sequence. So T-A-T-G-C-C-C-T-T, -T -T -T, T-G-C-C-C-T. This is the sequence on the DNA template that we want to build the DNA primer for. And so this above is the DNA primer that we build in a laboratory. But notice what we do with the DNA primer. We modify the sequence of the DNA primer. Now, if we look at this, codon here, CTT, this codon would have a complementary sequence, a correct complementary sequence of GAA. And GAA would code for the glutamate amino acid in that protein. But instead of, uh, instead of creating a DNA primer with the correct GAA sequence, we can create a DNA primer that contains a mismatched base. Instead of having a uh, an A here, we can place a C. And so instead of having GAA that codes for glutamate, we simply modify this last nucleotide in the codon sequence and we form GAC. And, and we know from the genetic code that GAC codes for aspartate, which is the amino acid that we want to build in the first place. And notice that because C will not pair up with T, no hydrogen bonds are actually formed between these two nucleotides. But that's okay, because this will still hybridize, it will still anneal, because all the other bases are paired up correctly. So as long as we use the exact temperature conditions needed for annealing to take place, Remember, annealing is the process by which two complementary sequences of nucleotides essentially hybridize, they bond, they form these hydrogen bonds. And so as long as we use the proper temperature conditions, this annealing process will still take place because all the other bases are paired up correctly. So once again, the important step of this procedure is to create a short DNA primer that is complementary to the side 
to be altered. However, this primer should be changed in a way to make sure the protein will contain aspartate instead of glutamate. And notice that even though one of the bases are mismatched, the DNA primer will still unyield to that DNA molecule because all the other bases are paired up correctly, assuming we also use the correct temperature conditions. Now, this DNA primer with that mismatched base, also known as a point mutation, can now be used to synthesize the protein of interest, as we'll see in just a moment. So, this base pair mutation is known as a point mutation because we essentially mutate our base at a single point. We exchange an A for a C. And that's exactly why we call this site-directed mutagenesis because we make this point mutation at that single site. Now the reason we also call it oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis is because this DNA primer that we create in this particular case, it consists of these 50 nucleotides that describes an oligonucleotide molecule. Oliga simply means we have um, about 10 to 20 to 30 of these nucleotides found inside that DNA molecule. So we synthesize an artificial oligonucleotide in the lab and then we change the sequence ever so slightly to basically accommodate a codon that will create the aspartate instead of glutamate. Now, let's actually take a look at the following three steps that we have to follow to basically form that protein that will contain the aspartate instead of glutamate. So in step one, we basically take that plasmid double-stranded DNA molecule that contains this DNA template that we studied in this diagram. And so this is our plasmid. Notice the plasmid contains this same DNA sequence that we discussed in this diagram. And so before we can replicate, we actually have to separate these two strands of DNA and we have to isolate this DNA template of interest. So we basically we heat, the, uh, we heat our solution that contains this plasmid and then we separate one of the strands of DNA, so this strand right over here, the inner one which has the sequence TAT, GCC, CTT, TGC, CCT, the same sequence that we discussed here. Now in step two, we now create that DNA primer that contains that point mutation and we add it into our solution at the right temperature so that the annealing process will take place. And so now the DNA primer will essentially hybridize with this section of that DNA template that we're going to use to basically synthesize our, pro, uh, our uh, polynucleotide chain. And now we add our DNA polymerase as, uh, along with the four types of building blocks, the four types of deoxynucleoside triphosphate molecules, and now the DNA polymerase will bind onto the primer and begin synthesizing in the 5 to 3 direction from this end to this end. So it will move all the way along this DNA template and will use that DNA template to synthesize that new strand of DNA that now contains this codon sequence, GAC, that codes for glutamate. So now notice we have this DNA molecule where one of the strands is this DNA template strand and the other strand is the newly synthesized green strand that contains this, uh, this slightly modified codon sequence. Now, if we take this plasmid and repeat step one and two, so essentially we heat it, we separate it, then we basically isolate that green DNA molecule that was synthesized in step two, and now we add that DNA polymerase as well as the four types of uh, deoxynucleoside triphosphates, now the DNA polymerase will use this green strand that contains that point mutation to basically synthesize the complementary strand to the green strand. And so after step three, we essentially produce that plasmid molecule, the double-stranded DNA molecule that will contain that point mutation. And now we can use this modified double-stranded DNA molecule to basically synthesize that protein in which we replace the glutamate with the aspartate molecule.
So another round of separation and replication of this DNA plasmid yields the modified DNA of interest that can be used to synthesize the protein with that aspartate instead of that glutamate. So we see that side direct mutagenesis is a very, very useful technique used in DNA uh, in recombinant DNA technology to basically change protein sequences by a single amino acid.